Welcome back to Devil's Advocate. I'm Amy Oliver Cook, Executive Vice President of the Independence Institute. With me is Krista Kafer from the Independent Women's Forum. Krista, the cliche is so true. They say, you know, we, women, you can't live with them, you can't live without them. And in this election cycle, it seems like everybody wants women. That's all we hear about, women, women, women. We are going to make the difference in this election. And they're targeting us hard. They certainly are. It seems like every commercial that comes out is intended for me. <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations. Yeah. It's all about you. Let, first of all, before we get into messaging to women, because that's really what I want to talk about, and, and I think it's funny that that we have these, these two male presidential candidates, and they're trying to figure out how to talk to us. So we're going to try and give them a hint here tonight. But tell us about your project, Colorado Future Project, with the Independent Women's Forum. Exactly. Well, let me tell you, we are the Colorado's Future Project. We are sort of a, a, a satellite of the Independent Women's Forum, an organization that I've had the privilege of, of working with in the past. Um, they, they, ind they represent independent voices like my own. They're not the now crowd, the crazy, sort of angry, bra-burning types. And they're not the, you know, far right. They're, they're, they're this wonderful voice for independent women, and they've decided to put a presence here in Colorado. I have a chance to be a part of that. And what we've done is we've put together a website. We're starting to do a lot of radio. We're going to be doing some other things, some, some speaking, some venues, some TV, radio. I'm excited about speaking to other women. One of the things I love about the Independent Women's Forum and, of course, your project here in Colorado is that their motto is all issues are women's issues. Here's why. I am, let me say this right now, gentlemen, reproductive rights, there is more to us than just reproductive rights. Yeah. I mean, we care about those, but we also care about things like the economy, we care about energy policy, we care about taxation. We care about all those things. Isn't it just, it just kills me that I'm basically put into this tiny box, you care only about the bedroom. I'm like, I'm a working woman, I'm a businesswoman, I'm an entrepreneur, I have friends, I eat food, I drive my car. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of a human first and then a woman. Um, I love being a woman, but there's a lot of things to me. And I think one of the things sort of historically, men have this bad habit of wanting to be like, box us in in some way, whether it's the white picket fence barefoot in the kitchen or it's all I care about is, you know, the bedroom. It's like, you know, I'm a human being. I care about these things. And when government acts, it affects me. It affects my gas prices. It affects my small business. It affects me in a lot of ways. And I want to be able to go to a nonpartisan site and look at issues and not feel I'm being pandered to, that somebody is trying to fool me or pull the wool over my eyes. And that's why I'm part of the Colorado's Future Project. And, and one of the things that I think, and you and I have talked about this, I think both parties, I, I mean, women are, are sort of, we represent that group of people who really hate the fact that Washington, D.C. is so incredibly dysfunctional. Amen. Just, we, we network, we like to talk with each other, we have conversation and coffee, and we, and so many women look at Washington, D.C. and go, they get turned off by mm -hmm. both parties. I agree. I think it, people, a lot of women, I think men too, but I know as a woman, I get turned off by harsh rhetoric. Yeah, stop yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> and pointing my finger. Yeah, don't point your finger at me. <laughs> I, I do that to my kids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just seems I feel like there's somebody out there just, you know, reeling off statistics in an angry voice, pounding the table, pointing the finger. And it's like, you know, you want to learn how to talk to women? How about just be a gentleman or a gentlewoman? Talk to me like another human being. Use stories, use statistics, but use a tone of voice that's respectful for heaven's sake. One of the things though that I, I think that the left found was so successful, and they'll use it again in Colorado, and we talk about this, we, we like the idea that, that there should be issue, all issues are women's issue, but why is it that when a group of women come out and say, I just can't I just can't do it. I just can't vote for that. And they talk about, they, they call it, we're going to Ken Buck a candidate. Mm -hmm. We are going to go after reproductive rights. That's what we're going to talk about. Why is it that women, I mean, do you think, I mean, it, it, why do we fall for that? Or why do we, why do we, why is that our number one issue? 
Well, I do know that there are women for whom that is a single issue. I know pro-life women. I also know pro-choice women for whom that is a paramount issue. But that is, a, a, I think, a fairly small number of women. In the case of Ken Buck, I don't think it was his position on the life issue because there's a number of wonderful pro-life uh, leaders out there that are very, you know, open about the fact that they're pro-life. It's just his tone. I mean, he came across as so harsh and so difficult that it turned off even pro-life women I know who said, I just... I don't want to vote for him. And they ended up voting Republican tickets, but not voting for him. And I honestly think it was the tone, the harshness, the way he communicated that turned a lot of people so off. So women peeled away. They, they didn't did. necessarily vote at all. They did. So your, for instance, your suggestions for, say, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. You know, I don't want to be pandered to. I don't want to be talked down to. But I have to admit, as a woman, I find harsh rhetoric and harshness kind of just, it really turns me off. Even if I agree with somebody on all of the issues, and I think of a recent event I went to where there was a speaker who, I agreed with him point by point, but he was so harsh, he was, he was yelling, he was bombastic, and I thought, you know, you're really, you're turning me off even though I agree with you. And that's gonna happen with women who, who maybe don't know what they think about things, or maybe they're on the line with something. If somebody comes off overly harsh, people are gonna get turned off to it. Let's get back to your website, Colorado Future Project. A couple of, of things that are on there that I really like. One is that we can take a test. Take mm -hmm. a test. We all think, listen, I know everything. <laughs> I'll be the first one to tell you. My kids will say, yeah, she acts like she knows everything. But we can take a test. I did take it. I actually got, I mean, I got some of them wrong. Well, some of them are kind of counterintuitive. Yes, they are. So t they, we can take a test. Give us an example of a couple of the questions. Well, I recommend taking the quiz because I think, you know, we hear things all the time on the news from our friends, and we just think, this is the gospel truth. Like, for, I don't know how many times, you know, ethanol has been sold as this sort of great energy-saving, earth-saving kind of fuel. And, you know, so you say, is this going to help the earth? Is this going to help um, the, the environment? Well, sure, why not? That's what I've always heard. Yes. And then the answer comes up, and no, it actually takes more energy to produce than is actually in the ethanol. It's not a good idea. But it sounds really good. It sounds good. Um, or take uh, take wind power. Wind power is great. But the fact is, is we've been told that it is just, you know, there's just no drawbacks to it. It's just awesome all the way around. Do you know it kills something like a half a million birds a year and almost as many bats? I mean, there are drawbacks to these things, whether it's the environment, fuel, taxation, the economy. I think we're told certain things. We're kind of, there's a spin out there. We get kind of whirled into it. By taking the quiz, you can kind of check, do I really know these things or not? And the cool thing about the quiz is that at the very end, you can give a dollar to one of 10 Colorado charities. And I took it and I gave my dollar to the Colorado Children's Hospital Foundation. Which you've given to in the past. I, it is a, it is a, it's an important one for me, but you get your choice of 10 different charities simply by taking the test. Exactly, and they're, t and they're all different. I mean, some help the homeless, some help um, abused animals, some help uh, children who are ill. There's just a variety of charities there. So it's sort of a bonus. First, check your knowledge. Second, you get to contribute to something that you love. The other thing I like, and I would recommend that especially our male candidates out there, if you wanna know how to talk to women, go to Colorado Future Project because the other thing is you have some real life profiles of women who are on there. Now you don't use their whole name, but you, you get permission from them. You use their first name if, if that's okay, but you tell a little bit about their story. And mm -hmm. that, I, I mean, I, I absolutely love that. Give us a few examples of some of the, the people that we will get to know on your website, some of the ladies. Well, you know, one of the ladies on there, it's, I, I interviewed her, and what I liked about her story is it shows how government regulation impacts ordinary women, ordinary entrepreneurs, um, small business women. So we hear a lot of the time that regulations stifle jobs, they hurt the economy, they hurt businesses. Well, you know, it'd be great to hear an actual story. So I talked to Shanine and found out that just these really silly regulations that are put upon her small, she runs a small daycare, and it's silly things. Like she's got to put a sign on how to wash your hands above her sink. She's the only adult working there. There's one adult. Everyone else is under two. So, they're not going to read the so sign. They're not really, so they're not really reading the sign. They're not really reading the sign. <laughs> so it's stuff like that. We think, well, that's no big deal. Well, cumulatively, when you take all of these silly regulations, and then you know the fact that some uh, bureaucrats get to come and look for that sign, how much time and, and, and money are wasted? And then if she wasted? doesn't have it, if she doesn't have it, then she can be marked 
down, for, down. She could lose her accreditation ultimately. Um, but you think about it, that's just a small business and a small amount of regulation. How much greater than for other female entre or male entrepreneurs where they're running a small business or a medium-sized business and they've just got these little things and they add up and what they caught they can cost a whole job or jobs they can cost a, ultimately they could be the the line that that the company can go under I mean these are these are important is, is there is there a give us one more do you have one more that that sticks out in your mind from your website well th this is another one that said that uh, is kind of near and dear to my heart and that's a, a, a friend Karen she um, is, is, is got a marriage, she works, her husband works, they've got a, they, at the time they had a baby long, on the way. The company he worked for went under, and when it went under, he couldn't even go on COBRA afterward, the, the insurance program that lets you stay on, because the company was completely defunct. So they had no insurance. She's something like six months pregnant. Oh. And, you know, it's that issue, if Congress had actually enacted real reforms, they wouldn't have been in danger. If each of the, if my sister and her husband and their, their baby to come had their own individual policy, not associated with their work, but had their own individual policy, then they would be able to, they would have stayed, you know, insured while he was looking for a job. But the way Congress are, has set it up, where the government has set it up, people get their insurance typically through their work. And there is things within the tax code that advantage those work, those work places as well as those employees for getting it that way. We, all, we get all of our insurance through our, you know, our, our car insurance privately, our house insurance privately. That's true. Why don't we have our own health care policies? And Congress had this great time to be able to do that, to empower us as individuals to have our own policies, and they chose not to. And allow us to do things like purchase across state lines. So we could get a more affordable policy. I mean, there were things that, that they could have done that they chose not to. Instead, they did something that has raised all of our health care premiums. As a woman, I'm facing higher premiums and less choice and less affordability because of this law. And you know, in Colorado, the same thing is true in Colorado, where additional mandates on regulation, and if you talk to an insurance broker they'll tell you and, and I have a friend who does this he'll tell you the for every single additional regulation it adds 0.25 up to two percentage points onto your your increase onto your premium so things like that now Krista those were those were just two examples I know there are more if people want to say hey I, I have a story to tell can they contact you I would love that so they need to go to coloradofutureproject.com contact me I would I mean I really want to put women's stories up there because it is it says her story uh, but I want to talk to women I want to get these stories I've got women who have struggled in the economy their husbands have lost jobs they've struggled they've got kids they're, or, or maybe they're like me they're single and they don't have kids and they've got a story that nobody has heard and I can make that story heard I can be that voice for them and what I love is that this is not Democrat this is not Republican and by the way uh, you might want to take a lesson can especially male candidates you want to know how to talk to women Colorado Future Project check it out thank you so much for joining us tonight on Devil's Advocate and as always, check out all the information at the Independence Institute. You can do that easily, independenceinstitute.org. Have a great weekend.